Welcome back to MySpace, Eunice Adupango in MySpace. We have been learning about childcare in the last two episodes. Before that, we learned about business and today we are going to talk about home care. We are going to study the virtuous woman and how she takes care of her home, especially how she manages maids. Because many of you have written to me and you have told me to do a teaching about maids and how to manage maids in the home. For starters, from the very beginning, I want to tell you that I'm not team no maids. I'm not team nomads and the reason why I, I do that and I usually tell people and my friends usually laugh I tell people I don't want to get to heaven when I'm tired you know people who are going to get to heaven and they are literally just crawling on the floor because they were tired and I can tell you there is no prize in heaven for the woman who did the most housework at least I've not yet met that one so I'm not that team I'm not uh, that team that says you know what just do your work you know in the UK they do their own work this is not the UK, this is not uh, America, this is Uganda, the, the cost of living is the way it is, the demands of life are the way they are. So I'm um, those people who feel that we just need to manage the affairs of our house with wisdom because that is what the virtuous woman does. Now today I'm going to talk about managing our domestic help and I'm going to talk about how to hire, how to manage and how to fire so that you don't get into a situation where the maid fires themselves you don't get into a situation where you are constantly whining and complaining about how they are doing their work but you also don't get into a situation where you hire the wrong person or hire in a hurry of course there are people who are going to follow the things that i'm saying and yeah there could be a mistake here and there but these things have worked for me i have been married for the last 17 years in those years i have had about um four or five helps the one that i have right now i have been with him for 10 years now and most of my helps have stayed fairly long the one that, that have stayed shortest have been maybe three years but the volley has been three going into four five years and then they leave and then another one comes and things like that and so i want us to delve in god's word and i want us to think critically about what you need to do when you are hiring someone now, the very first thing that I want us to notice is that in God we live, we move and have our being. That is what the scriptures tell us. What does that mean? It means that we hire in God, we manage in God, and we fire in God. We have our very being in God. We derive our existence, even hiring a maid. We derive our entire existence in God. So I want us to know that because we do it in God, number one, with God all things are possible. So if you a team there is no good made it is not good for you to continue in this conversation because for me i believe that because i live and move and have my being in god and that with him all things are possible he has created someone according to the word of god in ephesians 2 10 we are christ's workmanship created in christ to do good works that he prepared beforehand for us that we may do those works so there is a young girl out there there is a young man out there whose good work that god created ahead of time for him to do is to take care of my home is to take care of my children so for me i believe yes they are good made so if your team no good made switch off you don't have any reason to be here because according to uh, proverbs chapter 3 where it tells us to trust in the lord with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding it means you do not trust god and this conversation is not going to help you because you have already drawn a line in the sand you have already decided that god created only one good person who is you you know i usually tell people that if you are a very good person if you are a very good person such that if you had been the maid you would be our very best maid it is not true that god created only you there are very many good people you need to pat yourself on the head pat yourself on the back and tell yourself eunice 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 you're not jesus you're not the only good person and then you need to calm down sit down because i have realized that essentially even getting the right maid into your home comes from what you have imagined remember what i told last week when you imagine that it is possible when you imagine that with god all things yes including getting a good maid is possible you'll get a very good maid so for me i come from that place yes i grew up in my parents home we had very many good maids then we had some not very good maids but i refuse to believe that all maids are the same i do not say words like all ma maids are the same all taxi men are the same all boda boda men are the same what about if the boda boda man is your husband and you're my good friend and i'm saying all the boda boda men are the same so i want us to know that it
it all starts in God and it all ends in God because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all its peoples are God. So if God is the one who owns the earth and its peoples, he has created for a season. The Bible says that he is the one who determines the boundaries of our existence and he's the one who determines where we will be at any one time. T. So it all starts with God. That is number one. Number two, therefore, when you are hiring, you need to go to God. Now, because it starts with God, when you go to God, you need to make those confessions that show God that you believe. So when you're praying to God for a maid, before you hire a maid, please pray to God. Pray to God about the maid. Pray to God and confess and say, Lord, I believe all things are possible for you. Therefore, you are going to bring a good maid to me because it is possible for you to bring one. I believe that you created me in your image and therefore there is one you created in your image. Lord, bring one created in your image. I believe that the earth is yours, the fullness thereof, the earth and its peoples. There is one who is yours. Bring that person in. Pray and say, Lord, I believe that you have a good plan for me and a plan to prosper me not to not for welfare not for evil and a plan to give me my expected end lord my expected end is a good maid if you expect an end is a bad girl even if you confess all the other things you are not going to get a good maid so you need to confess that and then say the bible says ask and it shall be given seek and you shall find no can the door shall be opened remember there is a scripture that says you do not have because you've not asked and even when you ask you do not get because you ask with the wrong motive so come to god and say lord these are my motives i want someone who takes care of my home but i also want someone whom i can bless and i hope that is the motive because if the idea is blessed to bless if the idea is bring someone in your home to bless you but so that you also be a blessing to them so that you make their lives better not so that you rule over them the Lord is going to bring for you a good maid start by confessing and saying Lord I know that you make all things beautiful in your time and therefore this is a beautiful time for me to receive a good maid but I want you to also know that this maid that you want to bring you into your home is also a child of God and so just like the Bible says that he will not get the children's food and throw it to swine god is also not going to get the children's food a very good maid and throw to swine so the next step in prayer is to ask the lord to search you and say lord search my heart if there is anything of offense in me please clear it and then lead me in the way everlasting ask the lord what would be the good reason for me to bring a maid teach me those things so that then after you have told me those things i will use those things to bring a good maid to me therefore ask the lord to search your heart because sometimes you're not self-aware and you do not know that maybe the reasons why most of the maids have left is you. And by the way, first stick up in there. Sometimes it's not because you're bad mannered. No. Sometimes it's because you don't have faith and therefore it is God himself who picked the maid out. Sometimes it's because you manage those maids out of panic. When a maid does something, oh, I will increase your salary. Oh, I will do this. Therefore, the maids start taking you for granted. And so in order to shake you up for more money, one day they just wake up and say, Auntie Nenda. So sometimes it's not this bad manners of you are mistreating the maids but sometimes it is your emotional uh, roller coaster sometimes it's your spiritual roller coaster why the maids are living so you need to take time and say search me oh god search me oh god and then let the lord search you now when you are done with that number three begin to confess what is not right we have had issues in the bible where we know a few maids that were not good we have had issues in the bible where we know maids that did not put their guard down like hagar you know sarah is made so you are going to to also say you're going to confess and say lord i know that you love me so much that you lord because you love me because i'm a cov you're a covenant keeping god and i'm a woman of covenant with my husband you're not going to bring me a maid that is going to take away my husband you're not going to bring me a maid that is going to mistreat my husband you're not going to bring me a maid that is going to make me to go at loggerheads with my my workmates or with my neighbors you're not going to allow a witch to come into this house so you are going to make those confessions and then you're going to make declarations the bible tells us in the book of job when job's friends were when satan was talking to god about job he said but haven't you put a hedge around that man and for me that usually is a prayer i make when i'm looking for a maid i say lord i put a hedge around my home the bible says in the book of hebrews that angels are ministering spirits sent to minister to those in who inherit salvation so i call the angelic and i say mukama in any case if i 
I actually forget or if I am I'm in panic or if by any chance I don't figure out a maid and I allow them to come into my home I ask you to guard over the boundaries of my home I ask you to release the angelic so that no wrong person will enter my home and I can tell you I have had testimonies where people have come they've been highly recommended we've gone through the first phase of course I had prayed I had told God what I believe about him I had confessed and I have even said God I believe you have good people I have even talked to God about you know what shouldn't come in and whatever and then still the person comes but the hedge that I have built around my home exposes the maid before they start to work so that is number three now number four you are going to decide what your ideals are what are the ideals in your home for example right now for me because i have teenagers and then okay a teenager a preteen who is going to be a teenager next year early next year and then i have a seven year old and most of the time we all get out of home and then we come back home at the same time even if we can even if it's holiday my children can pick up after themselves because of the nature of training right now for me my ideals mine as Eunice, they are not yours but mine a clean home for me I just want a clean environment first of all me that has always been an ideal me I want a clean home therefore when I'm hiring a maid I give them certain little interviews to gauge how clean they are I can serve them something and I can say uh, help me to pick up that and take it to the kitchen and then I see where they throw it I see you know I put the dustbin close by so that I see if the maid is going to pick up uh, the, the peel of the banana and throw it in the bin and then put the other thing respectfully wherever I check if they are just going to throw it on the floor or to you know to throw it on the island or whatever so for me right now I want a clean home I want my I, I want a clean home I want good food yes for me I love good food I don't want bad food so my ideals are a clean home my ideals are good food my ideals are security for my children so that if I leave them home although they can pick up after themselves I need a strong voice that if uh, Adriel is running towards the electricity line someone can say oh Adriel don't run that side for me those are my biggest ideals and then I just want so when I say clean home I mean the floor is clean I mean the utensils are clean I mean the clothes are off the, the line and they are well pressed for me those are my ideals these other things have the children laid the bed those are not my ideals right now because my children are trained to lay the bed and even then it's their responsibility ideals like I want a clean bathroom my children must clean their bathroom and I clean my bathroom that is the stage I'm at but there was a time when my children were toddlers those were ideals right now I don't have ideals like I need a person who can read to my children that is not an ideal even then that now is no longer a house manager that is a nanny because we need to also put a difference between a nanny and a house manager a house manager is going to deal with the affairs of the home a nanny is going to take care of children and usually we mix the two but the two are not the same so decide what your ideals are what are your ideals at this point in time ladies especially because we manage the maids in our homes everything is not an ideal remember a maid is a helper they are not the owners of the work when we used to do kwepena you know dodgeball we if you were seven people you would be three three people per team and then there would be this one person we used to call chia the one who helps eh? Ayambako. now the maid is a chi yeah. they are not the owner of the job that's why they don't sleep with your husband otherwise if you want them to do everything let them let them sleep with the man also the maid is a helper so the owner of the work is you so you're actually out of line when you enter home and quarrel and almost pull out your hair because the owner of the work is you so if the work was done wrongly it is either you managed the work wrongly you didn't give instructions to manage the work or you hired the wrong person because this is your work so decide what your ideals are now when you decide what your ideals are now that is before hiring now let's get into the hiring now we've done all those things now we are going to hire number one don't hire in a hurry don't hire in a hurry I have had a season in my life where I did have a maid for almost a whole year and within that season they brought me several girls but every time I interviewed them against my ideals I realized that if I just hired them I was making a mistake and so what I did is I decided 
let me take time let me continue petitioning heaven because the right one who was prepared for this house is there somewhere and you see if you've waited for made for a long time it means that even your prayer direction changes because then i started to pray against any stumbling blocks or any roadblocks that are in the way of my rightful person to connect to me and that is the time when my current person came plus another girl called ruth who stayed with us for about five years then another one how i came and stayed with us for three years and then when she left i decided that now i don't want the girls let me have only this one boy by the way i've mentioned how but i want to tell you that one of my biggest ideals and has always been the ideal is religion so for me, because I'm born again, yes, this hour that came into my home was born again. Because for me, that is an ideal. So sometimes in the panic, you are getting people who are not of your faith. Because I have a story of a maid who came and taught the children another faith. And then the parents were never there. And one day they are at, at table, and then they tell the child to pray. And the child was praying in a, a way the parents had never envisaged. So for me that your religion or how you believe is an ideal so even if you're so good and you are a certain religion x you are nedomite i don't hire you i don't so number one don't hire in a hurry number two follow peace peace is the empire for everything when a person walks into your home and they you know the moment they sit in front of you your heart is pumping you know when you're looking at them you're wondering oh my god you have this fear there is an aura that has entered around them in your home it is time for you to just let it pass just let it pass peace is the empire for everything number three have them recommended by someone at least a neighbor in their village at least not this mama naru whom you know in the market because even you when you're looking for a job in town we want to know where you are who you are we ask you for a national id or something so can this person share maybe they are something from the lc because that is how you have hired witches who are in their villages for them they know them but because for you 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 are in the city and you receive the girls from the city. You receive them and then you discover later. Oh my, no, no. Because, you know, I have had instances. I know a very good friend. The maid died in her home. And she did not know where this child comes from. The child had asthma. Uh, no, not actually asthma, but some chronic illness. And they did not tell her. And she did not ask. At least, for me, at least, I know, like my current boy, Alan, we know the uncle. We know, you know, the person who brought them. We know the sister who is on Entebbe Road. We know someone. In case anything happens to that child, who are you going to talk to? Because, you know, it was so bad. They almost took this baby to prison because she was hiring someone she didn't know and the person had died in their home and these things are hard to imagine but they happen the first thing you're going to do is you want to find out about this person you know things like that and then you want to know about the person because that is what we do when we are hiring people we get background information about them I remember one time I didn't hire a maid because I actually stayed with her for one day and within that one day I called a few people to find out about her and then her elder sister said I didn't know what Chigaranga was so I asked someone and then they said that it's very painful periods when she's in her periods she cannot do anything and you see I had toddlers and they told me it takes about she takes six days with her periods and everything and you know to prevent myself from being angry seven days of every month or feeling constrained seven days of every month because I don't know what's going to happen in those seven days maybe that's when i have an important board meeting or whatever i just said you know something i don't have the grace to pray for your healing right now because you might have the grace to pray for her healing i said i don't have the grace to pray for your healing right now but i don't think that i can hire you for this job you probably need another person and i separated with a girl very well so you want to know are they sick do they have any sickness that you need to know about and then you know find out any background information now the other thing is now when you are hiring you need uh, to, 
to decide certain ideals. Now, for me, these are ideals, I think. Number one, a teachable spirit. Because the, the job of a servant, the job to serve, is a job that needs a teachable spirit. A teachable spirit, a humble spirit. Usually, I look out for those two things. And those things are easy to tell if you are a person of prayer. That's why it's very important for you, before you actually start to hire, to have an eye that sees. And if you do not have an eye that sees, those are some of the things you pray about when you're planning to ask uh, to, to get a maid. You ask the Lord to give you an eye. You ask the Lord to give you a, an eye that can see. And then there are small little interviews that you can do with these people that help you to know if the person actually has a teachable spirit in the way that you're asking them questions. You can sense someone who has a teachable spirit and someone who is actually humble. But also let us assume you actually hired them and within the first one week you realize they don't have a teachable spirit. Learn to give maids probation because for me I tell them you know we are going to try out this thing for a month and within the month I'll be looking out for my ideals and if it doesn't work it is okay you know so you give them that probation and usually for me during the probationary period half of the time I'm with them at home I usually take leave I used to take leave when I had a full-time job and I you know so that I take some time at home with the maid to see so a teachable spirit, a humble spirit, but also cleanliness is ideal. Cleanliness, can, you can tell even from the person's body when the person comes in. Is their mouth smelling? Don't just say, ah, umanyu kana ka mchialo, tujia kuka yigiriza. How is their, because abo mchialo vanaba, you know, for real, you know. How is their hair? Is their hair unkempt? Is, you know, are they smelling kavubuka when they come in? And, you know, if they found all the shoes at the entrance for them, did they leave the shoe? Or for them, they just walked in with the shoes? Because those things are showing you something. I have a very funny story that one of my sisters told us of a maid that went to a home and when she entered and sat down, uh, they told her feel at home. And they told her to feel at home. She went and she removed her photo from her bag and she removed the main family photo from the living room and she hung her photo. She really took it far. She felt at home. But that was, and people laughed at it, but that maid really did not work well. But that maid was already showing them that for her, you know, how do you go to a home and you remove the family photo from the, you know, from the living area and you put your photo because they told you to feel at home. So for me, I usually uh, look for a teachable spirit. I look for a humble spirit. I look for cleanliness. I look at them. I look at their nails because, because you're poor doesn't mean that your nails look dirty. I look at those things. I look for that. And I also look at um, how they take instructions. Because I assume that when the maid comes into my home, I'm the one who knows my home, so I'm the one who knows how they do things. So sometimes it's simple things like, I tell them, get that cup from there and put it there. But you know, it's not a simple thing of put, get it from there, put it there. I can say, put it there facing this direction. And then I see how she does it. And I can see if either they take instruction or they are quick to understand or the, when they take instruction they take it wrongly because if they just go then and just put it there they don't bother to turn it the angle i have told them then i know that ah this person has an, a problem taking instructions but there are those even the humility shows at that point because that's when they say Auntie, oh, Gambia, what? then i'll know that okay they didn't pick the instruction but they are actually humble and they have a teachable spirit so i usually look out for that i look out for who you worship because that is important to me i look out for a temperate spirit so i have my little interviews that i'm going to sh not going to share here where i test if you have a temperate spirit you know sort of like how we get uh, people in the workplace who are uh, you know um blind shoppers mystery shoppers whom we tell to do something to disturb you to see how you are going to react so sometimes i do things like that and i see if the person has a temperate spirit and then especially at the time when i used to hire for my toddlers because toddlers can get onto your nerves so i used to really see if this person has a temperate spirit i also look at how fast they are in thinking because for me it is an ideal in my home it used to be an ideal a lot because for me, I know myself. I know I can't deal with a slow person. So also sometimes you decide the things you're going to look out for based on your personality. For me, because of my personality, I can't deal with a slow learner. I really, really honestly cannot. I don't have that patience, in all honesty. Um, yes, I had a person in my home one time who was a really a bad, you know, a slow learner. And I keep telling that story about Auntie Margaret, whom I hired um, and I kept her in my house for about three and a half years and she was the slowest slow learner. But I can tell you that the only reason I hired Margaret is the Spirit of the Lord told me that she was my project to help. 
and so I hired her. Otherwise, when I interviewed her the first day, when I sat down with her, I was like, I cannot, I cannot. But then the Lord told me, this is the person. I can tell you some pretty funny stories about Margaret. Let me tell you only one for time. I remember one time I told Margaret to mingle posho. And the, 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 the posho was in a maganjo maize flour bag. The maganjo maize flour has a maize cob written on, you know, drawn on it. Now the maganjo maize flour bag was seated next to an azam bag of, of uh, wheat flour. Guess what? And you can imagine, Margaret was a woman of 35 years and she had seven children. So I'm not talking about a child, but she could not understand simple instructions. She could not read. And just like I'm going to tell you after you hire what you do, I had done all those things with Margaret, but God had given her to me as my project. So every time she did things like that, I would just go to God and cry and be like, you know, Father, I can't take this anymore, but because you've told me this is my project give me grace give me strength give me the ability and i can tell you so many stories about margaret but well we do not have the time so those are the things i look for in an interview for me the things that i have mentioned now the other thing that i do then is i make a good offer under my circumstances don't try to manipulate the maid by offering things even you that you can't off that you can't uh, give her you are trying out plait your hair I'll give you medical insurance because you're manipulating first of all the manipulation comes from a place of not trusting god so you're thinking that the maid is going to stay because you've given them a certain offer there are people who pay their maids 30,000 shillings i'm not on that team because i believe that someone shouldn't work for 1,000 shillings a day given the kind of work they do at home i'm not on that team but i want to tell you that there are people who pay that and then the maid stays for years and then for you you pay 300,000 250,000 and the maid doesn't stay for a week but maybe it is the spirit under which you've given the money because you have given it so that because you think hey if i offer much then they will stay make a good offer i have said a good offer by your circumstances these people these maids are not stupid if you are giving her seventy thousand shillings but every saturday she carries your baby and your toddlers and you go with them to kfc and you spend one hundred forty thousand, and you come on this thread and say you know what you need so, uh, what about in zenga we earn very little the maid also can see so under your circumstances make a good offer god knows that that offer you've made it under circumstances after all even when you prayed and you asked god for the right fit god brought the one who can earn what you can give okay but then the more money the less money you give the maid the more the more work you're going to have to do a bit in the background because when it comes to the job market you get what you pay for don't expect that maid who can work for thirty thousand and is purely illiterate. Because the other thing I didn't talk about what I'm looking for usually when I'm interviewing, I look for the age. Because for me, I cannot hire children. I don't hire anyone below 17 years. For me, that is a rule. Why? Because I can't leave my child in the hands of a child. I can't do that. And that is the reason why I also told you that I want to know about this person. Because I'm leaving my precious child in your hands. If you ran away with my child, where do I start from to look for you? Okay, so anyhow, make a good offer based on your circumstances. Now, the other thing then that you do is you start now managing the maid. So you start to divide labor from the word go, from the very word go. Tell the maid what you expect them to do and what you are going to do. The reason why maids wake up one morning and they sing and uh, most of those by the way do it in anger because they are looking at you you literally do nothing and yet you are shouting at them most of the time you are loading them with the loss the most of the work and then you are also abusing them on top of that or underlooking them or something so sometimes they do it to hurt because for me i have done some exit interviews of people's maids and some of them are like auntie oyonjagala nayaji kole mwaji ulire ye pankanyo they had they don't even have where to go but they are just trying to discipline you you need to divide the labor the bible tells us in proverbs chapter 31 verse 15 that a virtuous woman a prudent woman wakes up early and gives portions to her servant girls but also the bible tells us in proverbs 31 verse 26 that faithful instruction is on her lips so the other thing that you have to do is you need to give instruction to the maids 
This is one of the things that I do. I picked it from our restaurant uh, management system, checklists. I write checklists and even the mundane details, the little details, I write a checklist and I say, every Wednesday you do the cobwebs and then you clean the outside toilet and then you pick uh, whatever's rubbish under the mango tree. Every Thursday, you scrub the other bathroom, you whatever, I give the maid a checklist because you are the owner of the home. So you know the mechanics of the home, you know the things that are important for you in the home, and you know how your home wants to run smoothly. The maid is going to come, she's from another family, she's going to come and she's like a visitor and she's going to try to do the things the way they do them at their mother's home. And then you will complain from the very word go from the very word go divide the labor and be careful not to overload the maid they are seven days in a week decide they cannot be dealing with cobwebs every day unless you also are in a problem home but don't give yourself an opportunity to wake up one morning and quarrel about the cobweb tell them only once in that week and say we do general cleaning, we do spring cleaning, we remove the cushions out of the chairs and we put them outside in the sun, we clean behind the chairs, we go and we clean the cobwebs, give them a to-do list. I usually have checklists, how you open the day and how you close the day. So the maid knows that when the day starts, these are the chores I do. When the day is ending, these are the chores I do. And then I also make sure that I give them lists like, for example, if we are doing X, Y, Z, this is the procedure we follow. And then I also do menus in my house. So even my Alan, my boy, he's domesticated. He knows which days of the week he's the one who cooks and the days of the week that I cook. But I also do, the other thing I do is, apart from uh, breaking up the work for them, I train them. I really train my maids. I don't take them outside to train them, but I train them. And how do I train them? Because I have apportioned my work, one of the portions is cleaning of the house. The other portion is cleaning of the clothes. The other portion is cleaning the outside. The other portion is cooking because for me those are the ideals and then the fifth one is cleaning the cars the brand says this is what i call a clean car now mugamba when i tell you to clean the car you dust like this you do like this you use this chigoye you whatever like this you check like this the tires are like this when you do the following things i'll call it a clean car now we don't train only once after you know he will tell him okay now do it when he comes brand will come and say ah this one you didn't do well this one you did well next time put in this and then we commend them for the things they've done well remember if you are a civil engineer like me how many years did it take you to become an engineer even when you went to Makere, you took a, four, a whole four, year, four years just learning to do that thing. Remember, this is the maid's kind of work. There are four, they are trying to become a pro in that job. So you can't give them only one week and start making noise. Mommy, how about if you teach and teach and teach and they fail to learn? Then you ask the person, how long did you teach one week? Wow. It took you five years to learn medicine. Medicine, in your opinion, is hard, but it is hard for this young girl who is an illiterate to also learn the home. So for me, as a standard in my home, this is my home, it's not your home. If for you, you think it's a long time, that's your problem, that's, that's you. But for me, in my home, I take three months training. In those three months, I will teach you how I want my peas to be cooked. I teach you this Saturday, I tell you to cook for me the peas on Wednesday. You cook them badly. I say to Jachi Damuku Saturday. I teach you. That is what I do. Now, for Margaret, who has a special project, I took eight months teaching Margaret the same thing. Now, another thing you need to know is the maid is there to make your work easier. So there is work which we do partly, the maid does, partly I do. For example, on the days I cook, I don't cook from first principles. I teach the maid or the house helper that, that, that simple thing they can do for me. So I will tell them things like, at 1 p.m. today, remove those beans from the fridge and boil them for me. Put there just a little salt and cut an onion. And then for me, on my way from work, I will call and I will say, now cut for me my onions the way I told you. By this time, I already told them how I want my onions cut. Remember, I've trained for three months. So I say, cut for me my onions, uh, grate for me my tomatoes, put for me all my ingredients, I'm, I'm coming. When I arrive, beans that would have taken me two hours to do take me 30 minutes to do. I'm still the one who has done the work. Because the maid is there to make your work easier, but also do not load onto them all the work all the time. And also at the same time, make sure that you do the work in such a way that it is easy on them, 
and it is as easy on you as can be so the other thing that i that i recommend is that um if there are things that you want particular in your home please communicate them i call those terms of reference things like if you lose a loved one this is how long you will stay uh, at your parents home things like uh these are the types of rests that you're going to take through the year it's important for you to give the maid some rest please huh? don't have those maids that never go back to their home for a whole year and then still over Christmas, you're trying to entice them to go with you because you want to go to Dubai. And then when you go to Dubai, you, you want to be enjoying with your husband while the maid is the one uh, suffering with your toddlers. You need to have the terms of reference communicated to the maid. Everything that has been a pain for you from the past maids, think about a term of reference to give the next maid. Every story you have heard from people from their maids, Think about a term of reference to give to the maid. Don't wait for the girl to announce that I'm going to bury my judge and then you start quarreling, God, what am I going to do, whatever. Don't do that. The other thing is don't act vulnerable to the maid. Where the maid knows and thinks that without her, you can do nothing. That is the reason why I have said that when you're apportioning the work, have some bits of the work that you do. Even if the maid is helping you to lessen the load of even those pieces of work, have some work that you do so that the maid does not think that, eh, the day she will announce that she's going, you are doomed. We are going to get into the Christmas season and many of our maids are going to leave. And many of us, to entice them to come back, we are going to talk about salary increments. You must have a system for salary increments from the day one. Let it be predictable. I usually tell my households that after you have worked for six months, I, in, I will increase your work. I will increase your uh, work's worth up to a, a certain percentage X. After you have done another year, I will increase your work and I make sure that I keep my promise. So my current person, you can imagine how many times his salary has been increased. I don't wait for when you're going to the village for Christmas. Then I say, hey, well, no, come on next year. I will whatever. Avoid things of saying, let me keep the maid's money unless the girl herself says keep the money. Because most of you ladies think that that is the bait. Kuvanga and Teresa Sente so Ojakuda. Those things you're doing them. Remember that song we sing in the Anglican church, stand up, stand up for Jesus. The arm of flesh will fail you. Oh man, for heaven's sake, you're not the one who plans for that child's money. If they say keep for me the money, you can keep for them. I know some of you, you've come up with schemes, or, hey, let me leave for you some savings, whatever. If, you're, if it's coming from a good place, the Lord will put his blessing upon it. And even with those schemes, the maid will stay. So if those efforts you're doing are out of panic, even God is not going to bless the efforts. So you had better do them because they are coming from a good place. I will return on this conversation of maids another time, but I want you to try out the things that I have talked about. I want you to trust God. I want you to hire right. I want you to manage right. And you should also communicate the circumstances under which you part with the maid. And when you know that you know that it's time to part, please part before things become bad. Until next time, I am Eunice Adubango here in my space and I'll be very happy to discuss this issue of maids. You can put your questions in the chat and I'll be willing and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much for coming to my channel. Subscribe please and like this video and share it. Thank you so much and God bless you. Bye-bye.